My name is Chuck Johnson. I'm from Michigan. Um, let's see, my martial arts background is I started off doing Olympic Taekwondo at 15. I've been doing Taekwondo for 19 years now. Uh, Taekwondo and Hapkido is what I started off in. And uh, let's see, when I was 20, I went to Korea to train because I had, I was a um, Olympic state champion for Taekwondo and I really wanted to try and go to the 2004 Olympics. So I spent most of my college years training in Korea towards that goal. And it ended up not working out, but I had a really strong martial arts background as a function of it. So I went to Japan. And then after getting to Japan, I started doing security work for visiting Hollywood celebrities. And at that point, um, visiting Korean celebrities as well, just because I could speak Korean from living in Korea. And as a function of that security need, uh, you know, I started training in other martial arts that had to do with kind of like submission holds or joint locks, you know, things like Krav Maga or um, Jiu Jitsu or Han Mudo or martial arts like that. And then from there, I actually transitioned into getting into, uh, you know, fighting on camera or martial arts films as a function of the fact that I got onto an action team after being in a Godzilla movie. And after straining, or after getting into that, that's when I started studying things like Wing Chun Kung Fu and um, Karate and Capoeira, just to kind of round myself out uh, in terms of what I could do on camera. Let's see, I've done, I've done a lot of commercials, done a fair number of films, done a lot of TV. Oftentimes what you do in, for fight scenes on camera, it isn't something that pertains to one particular style. You know, like you, you see a lot of Taekwondo on on camera just because Taekwondo kicks are just pretty. You know, um, but for in terms of hand techniques, you see a lot of Wing Chun. In terms of something that looks kind of organic or almost tribal or um, something that's kind of raw and natural, you see a, a lot of Kapoya. So the reason that I started cross training is just because depending on the nature of the fight scene, you use different kinds of techniques. So the more different kinds of stuff you know, the better off you are basically, and the more adaptable you're going to be, particularly since every action director, you know, oftentimes come from a different martial arts background. Like, for example, the last thing I did was a, uh, um, a Power Rangers type movie called Kamen Rider. I don't know how famous Kamen Rider is in the States, but in Japan, it's, it's, it's huge, basically. It's like the biggest of the Power Rangers series. But the, the action director for Kamen Rider, he was a Jeet Kune Do guy. So a lot of his choreography was based off of Jeet Kune Do, of course, with a lot of really pretty kicks thrown in. But, you know, so as a function of that, I had to be able to adapt to his particular style. So that's why I just cross train as many different martial arts as I can. So what's your typical day when it comes to training or your typical week when it comes to training in Japan, martial arts space? Usually um, Monday is Kapoeda. I do about two hours of Kapoeda on Monday. Tuesday is Wing Chun in the afternoon and Kapoeda at night. Wednesdays is a rest day. Then Thursday is Karate or Japanese weaponry or Kobudo. Then Friday is fight choreography at night. And then Saturday is Karate during the day and then fight choreography at night. And then on Sundays I teach Taekwondo. And making your living in the entertainment business mm -hmm. is your full-time job now? Yeah, for the most part. There's still a lot of other things I do, just because, um, partially just because, you know, the, the entertainment industry, you just kind of go in waves, where sometimes you'll just be getting a ton of work, and then other times you're just not getting much at all. Um, and then also beyond that, I just like variety. I like to do a lot of different things. So, you know, in addition to working in film, uh, you know, I also teach Taekwondo. Um, and I also do kind of cross-cultural business consultation work just because at this point I've been living in foreign cultures for 14 years now. So I'm really used to it. I'm really used to Japanese culture. I'm fairly used to Korean culture as well. So I do a lot of work kind of for preparing people in Asia, particularly people working for Japanese companies to do business with Americans because I, can, I, I know what kind of difficulties they're going to face either way. So that's another thing that I do on the side as well. What's your level of celebrity in Japan? Are you, do people 
people know you on the street? Every once in a while, somebody will recognize me. Oftentimes, it's I'm, I'm kind of like one of those people you're like, well, hey, it's it's that guy, it's that one guy from that one from that one thing, right? And people will kind of know my face sometimes, but they won't necessarily remember what from because I'm I'm on TV a fair amount. But usually, it's never necessarily in a really big role, you know. So people, will, I'll just be I'll be that one bad guy, you know, that that comes in and does a fight scene and then dies here, or uh, you know, this this kind of thing. So I'm in. I'm involved in a lot of A-list projects, like for example, like that Common Rider movie was probably one of the biggest movies of the year. Um, I'm also I was also on Japan's number one drama. I was a regular character. I played an American FBI agent, which was really cool. Um, but even so, I was only on camera for never more than about ten seconds at a time. But I was in like you know ten or twelve episodes of the show. So it's just it's this kind of position where I'm in all these kind of big A-list projects, but I'm not necessarily A-list myself. I'm I wouldn't call myself a, a star by any means. I'm simply an actor. 